Oh, I realize we're gonna do, 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 do this chapter tomorrow. So I'm just gonna start this today on chapter 9 through 11 into 12. Uh, let's get started. Chapter 9, Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilet, a comic book by written by George Beard, pictures, pictures by Harold Hutchins. One day at school, every, everything was pretty normal. And the lunch lady, ladies were serving toasted rat sandwiches. Yuck! The principal was yelling, blah, blah, blah. The and the gym teacher was mean to everybody. But my grandma can't run faster than you guys. Then a UFO appeared and stepped the, the school with an evil ray. The ray made all the toilets come to life and made them even too. The toilets were hungry. Yum, yum, eat them up. So they ate the gym teacher. Oh, oh, Google. Google. Help! The toilets just scratched somebody's car and made up the gym teacher. Lord have mercy! Was my car? It looks like a job for Captain Underpants. <laughs> Captain Underpants ran to the storage room while the t- toilets were saying, Yum, yum, me and them up. He, he found a bunch of plungers. He put them in the toilets. Yum, yum, gina, blah, blah. The mouse got stuck. Tra la la. Hooray for Captain Underpants. Now, time to stop that e- evil UFO. Captain Underpants went outside and saw the UFO and opened up. That ching. And jumped up the terrible, terrible 2000. Our flash. They had a big fight. Captain Underpants was faster than a speeding wristband. Zip, ding. More powerful than boxer shorts. Tra la la, kid. Ooh. And able to leap tall buildings without getting a wedgie. Ja, leap. Tra la la. Captain Underpants snuck up behind the turbo toilet 2000 and gave him a wedgie. Wedgie power. Bing! Ouchie! Then he hung the TT2000 on a stop sign. He pulled back hard. Then let it go. Ding! Kaboom! The spaceship blew up and all the toilets returned to normal. Hooray! Even the team, even the gym teacher escaped. Aw, man! That's the end. Treehouse coming soon. Chapter 10, A Big Mistake. George and Harold sat together in the detention room, reading through their nearest comic book and beaming proudly. We gotta go to the office and make some copies of this, said George, so so we can sell them on the playground tomorrow. We can't, said Harold. Don't you remember Mr. Crop said he would be suspended us if we caught us leave the room? That he won't let him catch us, said George. George and Harold sneak out of the room quietly and crawled down the hall to the office. Uh oh, said Harold. There's a bunch of teachers in there. We will never get to use the copying machine. Hmm, said George. Are there any other copy machines in the school? How about the one that Melvin had in the gym? asked. Harold. Oh yeah, said George. George and Harold crept over the, to the Ginny gym and found the pasty 2000. I wonder if this machine still make copies, said Harold. Melvin say did that. Melvin did say that he made some adjustments to it. Oh, he probably just cranked a mouse 
in that for us, said George. It's the oldest trick in the book. I'm sure the machine still makes regular copies. George and George placed the cover of the new comic book face down on the glass screen and pressed start. All the lights, the lights in the hall scored down, and the past the 2000 began to shake a clock around wildly. Giant volts of static electricity zapped out the bottom of the machine as a great whirlwind rose from the top. Loose papers and other small objects in the room were stuck into the wind, and they spun above the machine like a raging cyclone. Now, ding, it's supposed to do this, shouted George over the horrible noise. After, finally, after a series of flashes, flashes and a loud zap, the noise went and sparks stopped altogether. The only sound that could be heard was sound of groaning and crying uh, about inside the blow. Matter frame of the past the 2000. It sounds like something alive inside there, said George. George snatched up the comic book from the top of the machine. Let's get out of here, he cried. Then, just then, a small ding was heard, and a full-size shiny white toilet emerged from the past 2000. The sheep were shined and jagged and angry. Eyeballs glowed glowed with red, swingly beams. Yum, yum, eat them up, cried the evil toilet. Almost immediately, another talking toilet emerged, followed by another, and another, and another. Yum, yum, eat them up. Oh no, Melvin was right. The bottle all the make trance subterranean evolution crypsomizer really does curate living breathing three dimensional copies of two dimensional images Harold cried confidently I got an idea said George What? asked Harold Run George and Harold screamed and ran out the gym door closing it tightly behind them Aha! Young Mr. Krupp, who was coming down the hall, you boys love the detention room. You know what that means, don't you? I was on a fool, cried Harold. Too bad, shouted as they like, you boys are actually suspended. Wait, cried George, you got to listen. Behind the door is an army of vicious talk. I don't have to listen to you boys ever again. Well, Mr. Crumb, now get your stuff and get out of this school. But, 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 Hamilton, you don't under. Get out! Mr. Crumb screamed. George and Harold ground and walked to their lockers to collect their stuff. Gosh, said Harold. And one day we got a detention, a suspension, and we created an army of evil talking toilets who want to take over the world. That's a pretty bad day, even by our standards, said George. Oh well, said Harold, I just hope things that don't get any worse. Chapter 12, Things Get Worse. Word spread quickly throughout the office that George and Harold had been suspended. The teachers rushed out to cheer and laugh at the two boys. You're in big trouble. Now, chuckled Miss Anderope, I can wait to call your parents and tell them the news. Let's take their desk outside and chop them up, cried Miss Rebel. Let's throw a party in the gym, cried Miss Demeanor. Wait, no, cried George. Whatever you do, don't open the door to the gym. We can do whatever we like, smiled Miss Demeanor as he dashed over the gymnasium door. Look, I'm opening the door. He quickly opened the door. Now I'm closing the door. Now I'm opening the door again. And now I'm... An evil toilet had struck its mouth through the window. Now Mr. Meadow up and swallowed him. The whole flush.
The talking toilets then pushed their way through the open gymnasium doors and spelled out the hallways. Uh, yum, yum, eat em up, the toilets below. Yum, yum, eat em up. The teachers couldn't believe their eyes. They screamed and ran for their lives. Only Mr. Crump, Miss Ribble, and George and Harold remained as frozen in fear. They watched paralyzed as the talking toilets came nearer and nearer. Finally, Miss Ribble pointed at the to- toilets and snapped their fingers. Now, go away, she cried. Go away this minute. But the toilets didn't listen. They moved closer and closer. Finally, Miss Ribble turned and ran. Mr. Crump, however, just stood there in a daze. George and Harold looked up at him. Oh, uh, uh-oh, said Harold. Did she just snap her fingers? Yep, said George. Now we're really in trouble. And George was right, but at that moment, Mr. Crump had begun to change a silly hair no neck smile came over his face as he stood definitely before before his foes. I put a stop to you, fire villain, said he said barely. But first I need some supplies. Mr. Crump turned and dashed to his office. George and Harold ran after him. Why did Miss Rebel have to stomp her fingers? cried Harold. Why? Never mind that cried George. <laughs> Mr. Crump is turning into Captain Underpants. We got to pour water over his head before it's too late. If you want to read Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilet, chapter 13 to 15, please link the description below. Bye.